and gentlemen, and welcome to parrotsonjava.com. Today, we want to make a small show on YouTube, and we want to speak about this, what we are doing all the time. We want to show you a little bit about our path through the world of 3D cameras, and we're starting with one device which we started doing. No, 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 no. At first, we want to introduce ourselves, I would say. So this is Thomas, and he studied computer sciences in Munich. And this is Martin, and he also studied computer sciences. Yeah, of course. And uh, now we can start with 3D cameras. <laughs> so let's go on. Okay, so Martin, what is this device? This is a leap motion. Yeah, it's <laughs> from the year 2012, and it's a crowdfunded device. Yeah, actually came out in 2013, but we got our first device in 2012. Of course, because we received a development unit of this cool USB peripheral device. And um, yeah, what is it? Yeah, you can track your hand with the leap motion. You can track your hand? Yeah, if I hold my hand on top of the leap motion like this. Like this, yeah. And um, there are two cameras implemented in the, uh, uh, in the device and uh, those cameras are capable to recognize infrared. So the next thing inside the leap motion, there are three infrared emitting diodes. So they emit the infrared light and it gets reflected. The two cameras are recording the result and with a special algorithm, yeah, you know, uh, you can calculate the exact position of the hand and, and you cannot only track the hands it can also track uh, some points on your fingers even this point and this point the knuckles of your hand yeah. and so on and so on and you can track all these things with a with a very very precise with very it's very precise, precise up to 0 0.01 millimeters. So of course, it can identify up to two hands. No, it's not a problem. But with more hands, it's it, it, it's getting a problem because uh, you they will see that they are overlapping. So yeah. So this is Dilly Motion 2012, and uh, with this we've implemented a, 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 a quadcopter a, control. Yeah. So a parrot AR drone, and uh, we are we are using our hand to control the drone. So if you want to fly forwards, you are doing this backwards to the right to the left and. If you want to change the height, you are doing something like this. And if you want to land, you just do this gesture. So and this was implemented in mainly one day, I would say. Four hours. This Most problems had nothing to do with, with the this gesture. Step. So there are um, uh, libraries for Java, for C, C Sharp, Python. Mainly, ev mostly everything you have and all yeah. the operating systems. And Mac that's OS, Windows, Windows, Linux. Yeah. Everything good. Next device, this one, uh, that's a creative gesture camera or Sense 3D camera. It's a perceptual computing camera and uh, it's originally built by Intel. Now the name, the current name is Real Sense. Yeah, but this was the predecessor and we started implementing with this device because there was a hackathon. Yeah, what are the precise details of this camera? It has 60 frames per second, it has an RGB resolution of uh, VGA and a depth resolution of 320 across 240 pixels. And this is done by a technique called time of flight, whereas the leap motion which we saw earlier yeah. is based on a so, so-called speckle pattern. Let's say my fist is a, is a photon and it's going directly into Thomas face yeah and absolutely. then it gets reflected and uh, I will recognize the echo of the light <laughs> yeah <laughs> or something like this um, yeah and uh, with this technique uh, we are able to generate a depth map somehow so we have a 3d image um, yeah you've already said there is an RGB camera there is an infrared camera but there is a microphone implemented as well. But yeah. why? Yeah, because it can also do speech recognition. What the? <laughs> That's crazy. In Germany, we say uh, Eierlegende Wollmilchsau. So it's an egg laying wool milk pig in <laughs> English. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, because uh, uh, the camera tries to do everything somehow. Uh, with this camera, we've implemented the drone control as well, so we were able to control quadro quadrocopters uh, through the air. And 
Yeah, and we were able to battle each other yeah. using an epic fight. Yeah, right. That's <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, so, this was in the year 2013. Yeah. Yeah. And now we want to talk about a huge device. A really huge device. <laughs> it's uh, it weighs up to one kilogram somehow. Yeah, not really, but maybe. So, and this is the Kinect version two. Yeah, and. This is a 3D sensor or 3D camera sensor as well. So, some facts to the resolution, for example, because I can remember it was a really <laughs> scary one. I've never heard of it. Yeah, this one has an HD resolution when it comes to RGB, and it has also has a near VGA resolution when it comes to depth. So, it has a really good resolution in both domains, and it comes at a frame rate of 30 sec uh, frames per second. But it also has the problem that it is a little bit huge. Yeah, it's really huge. Um, so um, I think we forgot to add something. Intel Reasons camera, um, there are only drivers available for Windows. I think we'll, this is a really important information for you. Uh, so um, and there are bindings for Java. Um, and but originally C++ it was meant to be C to use it with C++ and C Sharp, right? Yeah. So, and the same is somehow true for the Kinect version 2. So it's a Windows uh, device. You can use it in Windows. Naturally, and because it was made by Microsoft. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, and it is uh, done, uh, it is realized in the .NET project. So you can use it with C Sharp. You can use it with all the .NET languages, basically. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, yeah. that's it. So it's... Um, it's wor uh, working with time of light as well? Yes. And uh, we used it to control uh, certain games, like we used, uh, we created a Flappy Bird version where you can yeah. flap your hands. So you know the Flappy Bird. <laughs> and you can do this with the Kinect as well. And uh, believe in me, only uh, three minutes are enough and you have really so you, gorilla arms, you know? Gorilla arms. Remember of the movie, uh, what was the name? Minority Report with Tom Cruise. Yeah, and um, when they made the design for this gesture-controlled glass wall, yeah, yeah, this was a dystopian view of the future because uh, it is really, really um, very hard it's to, very contro hard. to control your hands or uh, control objects using this gesture because. One minute and your arms yeah, are you very tired. Okay, so now we were in the, it was uh, the, the year 2014 and now we want to speak about Intel again. Intel again. So now we want to speak about Intel RealSense. It's yeah. not perceptual computing anymore. So that's the successor of the camera so we saw before. This is the whole camera of the RealSense. Um, yeah, here it is. So, but uh, no, we are just kidding because the Intel RealSense camera, the F200, is only this piece here. The rest um, is a project we've realized with the F200 of Intel RealSense. So with this goggles, you can see the world through the eyes of a Terminator. There is another video on YouTube, so enjoy it. But we want to speak about this camera, F200. So, Thomas, again, what is the F200 capable to do? Yeah, again, we have two uh, different cameras. So in this case, we have uh, not a time of flight camera, but it is a parallax based technique. And there we have two infrared cameras, which uh, record the record a depth map again, which has a resolution of VGA, so 640 cross 480 mm -hmm. pixels. And an RGB camera, which is normally able to do a full HD uh, resolution and then we have a microphone built in like we had with the mm -hmm. creative gesture camera so again it's a ALAC what was the name ACLAG <laughs> <laughs> wool milk pig yeah okay uh, almost most of the cameras there is the infrared camera implemented and there is a RGB camera implemented as well so so that you can receive the original image and the depth image and um, yeah, features of this camera are, for example, you can do face recognition. Yeah, but not only face recognition, but also identification, so it can remember your face. For the face recognition, 
you can identify up to 78 points in your face. It's, uh, these are the so-called face yeah. landmarks. So you are able uh, to identify uh, the eyebrows or the nose and you can use different points to identify those parts of your face and uh, the lips as well. And uh, if you have a beard, mm, yeah, it's working as well. Uh, it depends. Yeah, it depends on the size of the beard. Of the size, size. right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, and then we have also the capability of hand tracking. So it can yeah. do the same as it did with the face, but with the hands. There we have 22 different points, which we can remember for each hand, mm -hmm. which you hold into the camera. And yeah. there are also some other features again, like speech recognition, you can you have speech synthesis, you have also object recognition, you can scan the environment. There is a feature um, which, with which you can measure the heartbeat just by looking at you. And this is uh, what we've used within this, these goggles. So with each and every heartbeat, 15 grams of blood, so roundabout they get pressed into the head. And this results in a very small change in the skin color. Yeah. This camera is capable to identify this. Yeah, that's and then a thing. you can calculate the heartbeat. Maybe it's not that precise like a medical device, but, but it comes close. It so comes close. We did some tests. Yeah, we did some tests. Okay, now you saw all the different uh, the, the F200 device yeah and as you as you saw this was a still a pretty huge device but it gets smaller and smaller in time so this one is an R200 camera and it can basically do the same as the F200 camera did and it also has an increased range so whereas the F200 was just capable of tracking you with a distance of up to 1 meter this one was already capable of doing up to three meters. If you go outside, even more. Even more, up to five meters or something like this. It works on Windows and uh, Intel is currently working um, to, to make the SDK available for other uh, operating systems. So, yes. are we allowed to say this? I don't know what I would say. I've just uh, checked the Intel NDA and we are allowed to uh, say that they are working on the Android version. So it should be coming out in the next maybe few SDK. Months. Yeah, few months. Compare it again. So, so this one is the F200 and this one is the R200. Yeah, camera. and uh, when you have a look to the dimensions of this camera, it weighs about, I would say, 50 grams or something like this. And uh, it's a really small camera. And now think about installing this camera on uh, goggles like uh, Thomas is wearing. Um, this small piece of camera compared to this one. Yeah. yeah. So that's the next version of the Terminator vision. Yeah, perfect. Okay, and um, yeah, I would say ne that's nearly enough. We uh, wrote a browser-based game uh, where you can shot on some birds yeah, yeah. The, with so such a gesture here. In Germany, yeah. there was a game called Moorhuhn yeah. uh, in the 2000s, in the early 2000s. Yeah, the English name was uh, Crazy Chicken, but uh, uh, in Germany it went viral, but uh, the, the English version not. Yeah. But now you can shoot the birds with using gestures only in a browser-based game, which is only using JavaScript. And yeah. this can be done with the F200. So yeah. there's a support for a wide variety of languages like JavaScript, like Java, like C++, and like C Sharp and some other .NET languages. And Java? Yeah, also Java. Yes. There's one more thing. There is one more thing, ladies and gentlemen. And um, guess what is that? What is it, Thomas? That's an SR300. Yeah. It's the successor of the F200. It's the 
Uh, we have to repeat. Uh, this is the F200. Yeah. And this is the SR300. SR300. So the SR stands for short range. And it is basically a, pr a successor of the F200 using the same technologies. You can use it as a drop in replacement for your existing F200 applications. And it does everything better as the F200 did. So it is more precise in every way. It has a more accurate uh, view of the scenery. And yeah, with it, you can do the same yep. as what you did with the F200. So we are trying to do some cool showcases with it. So, um, uh, but not not yet. Not not yet in this, no, no. And if you are really interested to see what you can do with the SR300, I can tell you, you have to wait for our second episode of this, what we are trying to do here, talking about gesture control and 3D cameras. Yeah, so just stay tuned. Yeah, and uh, if you like this, leave some comments. If you are interested in more things, leave a comment. And we are really eager to answer your questions. Yeah, so see you next time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, <lacht> mal schauen, was man da was machen kann.